One of the most conveyed ideas among these contemplations has been that truth speaks no words. This not only means that truth is an essence beyond the world, where the layer of programming language is not used, but also that anything heard or read in words, even if it claims to be truth, can never be it. So, with that in mind, whether you hear a voice or read a text that claims to be the truth, it can immediately be known that it isn't, because it came to you in words. Words are time-based programming language for spells that can only exist in a reality. Therefore, since they are not timeless, nor unambiguous, nor independent, words can only, at most, represent facts, not truth. And neither can images, since they are worth a thousand words. Now, despite words not ever being able to represent truth, they can, certainly, be made to translate some hints of it, usually in the form of stories, or to point in a direction where a wordless, which means beyond spells, realization is had. The same is true for images. For more on this, please revisit the contemplation named Stories, Myths versus Hoaxes. This does not mean that words and images are by themselves absolutely useless. Our mind and world characters need them and use them regardless. So, it is far wiser to learn to use words and images, as well as to use other worldly as aspects, with the purpose of allowing the character to become more aligned with the metaphorical general direction, where the wordless realizations can emerge beyond the character itself. In my view, the mind character we wear on our egos is made up of programming words and images, and he is our creation in the sense of being a reflection, as discussed in previous contemplations too. Therefore, given that realizations are a knowing that is neither made up of words nor of images, it is inaccessible directly to the character, but not to the ego. This is because the ego does have a connection to the timeless truth, or can have, if it has not been severed, but that's a different matter not discussed here. The ego is in the middle position between the two, on one side the timed dead world, with which he can interact directly with motions and actions and so on, and on the other the timeless living truth, which is inaccessible to his worldly senses and mind, but that he can interact with through immediate surges of inspiration, realizations and knowing, without motion or actions. Given the timeless nature of truth, as actions are always a timed event. So the dilemma for the great guardian that the ego should be, given his partial connection to truth, is to maintain a balance between keeping the mind character with him and not against him, as the character accompanies him in the world, and guiding the character towards a general direction, mostly moral in practical terms, but not only that, where he voluntarily accepts to deal with an incomprehensible, because it is wordless, knowing. If one's mind character is bored, nagging or anything that is preventing one's ego from focusing on something, like contemplating on something, for instance, one of the tricks that I have used in the past is to have the ego distract the character, to give him something to do. While the character uses the mind, through words and worldly logic, to accomplish a given task, as menial as it may be, the part of the ego that is connected to truth is then left alone and free from disturbance to then contemplate and realize. In the same manner, one of the ways one can help one's own character to focus and help instead of working against the ego guardian is through prayer, exactly because it uses words, so he feels right at home with it. From my own experience with prayer, so this advice is only worth as much as that, 
It works best if one adapts a preferred prayer by changing key words to others, which the character has assigned meanings that are more in line with the intended result of dealing with a knowing that the character can touch directly. It also works if one writes one's own prayer, for sure. But one thing I have noticed in my experience is whether you change key words of an existing prayer or you write an original, do make it musical, make it rhythmic, and make it somehow rhyme. This will help the character who is speaking the words of the prayer to become more involved in the task, more entertained, if you like, so that he can come to a state where he more willingly cooperates with the ego in his continuous attempt for balance. The world uses this in the music industry, making of song lyrics prayers that intend to pull the character in any other way except the moral general direction where truth can be realized, although sometimes their spellcasting has the opposite effect. In any case, our egos can and should also use that to help, love and guide a mind character that can only interact with a world of words and images and time. So a truth-aligned prayer, even if composed of words that will never be truth themselves, of course, becomes an assistant that helps the mind character love and help the ego, who in turn loves and helps the mind character. And the ego is also, in turn, loved and helped by the timeless truth through realization, inspiration and synchronistic miracles, all without any direct words, because truth does not use them. So imagine, if you will, as a metaphor, that you have a man that in the metaphor represents truth, who is loving and taking care of his dog, which is the ego, who is stuck in the world of doghood. In turn, the ego in his layer, which is between the truth and the world, is also a metaphorical man loving and taking care of his dog, which is the mind character. Consequently, the mind character has the same position in relation to the body. Now, if on any of these levels the dog revolts against the man and refuses to either love or be loved, to either help or be helped, the alignment is lost and the lead is severed, metaphorically speaking. Like I heard somewhere before, and it is in my own contemplation and realization wise, you can never rebel against the devil, only against God. My own interpretation of that statement gave the word devil, the meaning of everything that is pulling towards falsehood and death, and the word God, the meaning of the alignment towards the moral, general direction of timeless truth and life. As stated in other contemplations, my view is that the external circumstance is a reflection of the internal one. So when we rebel against our own internal circumstance, regardless of whether this rebellion occurs at the mind character level or at the ego level, we are being a dog that rebels against his man, against his only connection to beyond the state of doghood, thus interfering with the whole connection. I reiterate again what I said several times in previous contemplations. The ego is not the enemy of truth. It is truth's only representative in the world of falsehood. If our mind characters can be convinced to attack, rebel and weaken their egos, then they will be not only condemning themselves to nothing but falsehood cycles, but also pulling the ego out of balance, so that he can't connect with truth. In a metaphorical way, both are condemned to hell, which is the only result of a revolt, even if against tyranny. The iron hand crushed the tyrant's head and became a tyrant in his stead. William Blake's emblematic quote translated this into words beautifully. 
Prayer can, therefore, help the reconnection between the mind character and the ego, and between the ego and truth. Not because truth needs prayer or worship, truth has no needs, being absolutely independent. But because the mind character and the ego need to want to voluntarily reconnect with truth. Prayer is, therefore, not useful to who you are praying to, but useful to who is praying. If one finds oneself praying to or worshipping something or someone because they need it, then you can rest assured, at least in my opinion, that you are feeding a parasite. Truth needs nothing. Truth is life and can only ever love. If it seems absent from ourselves, then it is because we, in any of our levels, the ego or the mind character, have rebelled somehow against that connection. What seems like freedom at first, like a dog that manages to cut the lead and run to the park, becomes a feeling of abandonment later. But it was the dog that ran away, not his man that abandoned him. Truth is timelessly waiting for our return, respecting our desire to run around crazy, but at the same time hinting us on where to come back home. Prayer can help the dog find, or figuratively better, be found again by his loving man, but only if that prayer is a manifestation of his voluntary will to come back. And that prayer, whether it is an existing one, or one edited by yourself, or one you yourself wrote, then it becomes your tool to become aligned and to remind yourself of what you want. I would say, truth speaks no words, but you do.